in life things present themselves to you where if you don't do it, um, you'll be regretting it for the rest of your life. My name is Mo Spencer. I'm a marijuana attorney. What does that mean? Um, I'll tell you what it doesn't mean. It doesn't mean that uh, I'm an attorney simply uh, uh, here to get people high. Uh, that's, that's not what I do. Marijuana attorney, I represent growers, which the Liquor Control Board calls producers. I also represent uh, processors. I brought a few samples for you guys. Just playing. Just playing. <laughs> I, I see administrations going, oh, heck no, okay? I'm not a traditional attorney. Um, a traditional attorney uh, that my, my professor reminded me when I was in law school is an older white male, okay? Clearly, I'm not that. You can't always be worried about the outcome. You, you, if you're worried about the outcome, it'll stop you from starting. I booked Mo Spencer for a talk about marijuana at a special 420 event. Uh, we were really happy to have him here. He did a great job. It was super engaging. It's a different topic for students, so it makes them want to get involved and hear what he has to say. When you're choosing what you want to do in life and you're doing something for others and you're doing something really worthwhile, I call that going from good to great. And what was the turning point that had you focus on marijuana? It, it's a plant that has been used for centuries, if not thousands of years, and cultures all over. So we're one culture that says, Oh, you can't, you can't use this plant, and you can't use this plant at all. And, and so I started un learning about the history of why we can't use this plant. And the history of it is dark, all right? Uh, it's not a pretty one in terms of why it was, became illegal and what sustained it in being illegal. Nixon in 1970 passed a controlled substance ban. The controlled substance ban um, is what dictates uh, the, the, the federal laws on drugs. You have Schedule 1, Schedule 2, Schedule 3. Heroin, Schedule 1, okay? Marijuana, Schedule 1. To even get on Schedule 1, it has to be a drug that has no medicinal purposes whatsoever, okay? And Nixon got it on there. We know now because of this. So straight from the horse's mouth. And I want you to keep in mind what every president does when they get elected. In 68, Nixon was no different. He had his eye four years later on what? 72. He was getting a lot of pushback from the counterculture. You know what the counterculture is in 1970? College. College kids, all right? So follow me on this. You had Kent State where the police came in and actually killed students. And so this was a tumultuous time. This is what set students against Nixon. He said, I've got to wheel these kids in or they're going to kill me. Essentially, they're going to decimate me in 1972. Okay? We understand we couldn't make it illegal to be young or poor or black in the United States, but we could criminalize their common pleasure. We understood that the drugs were not the health problems we were making them out to be, but it was such a perfect issue we could not resist because this is what the college kids are smoking. This is a counterculture. These are kids who weren't going to be voting for Nixon in 72. If we make this illegal, we can start arresting these kids. And when you got arrested in 1970 for marijuana, you got a felony. And when you get a felony in 1970, what can you not do come election time? And guess who won the election 1972 by landslide? It was just a tactic for one thing and one thing only, for power. Think about that. 40 years later, thousands, millions of lives who've had possession charges um, decimated or unable to work or unable to really live because you're now ostracized. You can't get FAFSA. You can't get FAFSA with a drug conviction, all right? Um, maybe, maybe, perhaps maybe a lot of you wouldn't be here. Um, housing, so that comes up on housing, all right? And a lot of landlords won't rent to you. And jobs. I don't even have to explain that, right, when they do the job search, right? So you're forcing young people or people who get um, these marijuana charges from 1970 onwards after the controlled substance ban passed uh, to, to really live in their grandma's basement. If you have that conviction, it really hampers you. That then leads to what I call the school to prison pipeline and an incarceration nation. The largest prison industrial complex in the world, yes, more than China, yes, more than Russia. The numbers, the numbers are staggering. 16.5 million Americans have been arrested for marijuana violations since 1970. 80% of them minor possession drug charges. 
and the U.S. taxpayers have spent over $20 billion enforcing marijuana laws. To have that charge follow you for the rest of your life is just, you're crippling our young people. There are alternatives if you want to hear them. There are alternatives if you allow people to come in and instead of, instead of being tough on crime, being smart on crime. And I think that's the new battle cry and it should be, and it's working. What happened in November 2012 when it became illegal or essentially Washington, Colorado decriminalized, I have to tell you it's nothing short of a coup d'etat, a coup d'etat on the federal laws. And the feds said, we're cool, we're fine. And everyone was like, wow, it's really happening. It's really happening because the feds have stayed away. When you ask voters in Washington, when we passed I-502, the measure that legalized and decriminalized marijuana, when you ask people um, uh, in this state, most of the people who voted for it were in eastern Washington, the red part of the state. It was conservatives who carried this, all right? Conservatives. And we asked them, um, do you smoke pot? Majority of them, no. Do you advocate smoking pot? No. Do you advocate your kids smoking? No. Are you going to vote for I-502? Yes. Hold on a second. That, that doesn't compute. You, you can't change hearts and minds overnight, but you change hearts and minds when people realize that there has been an injustice, and then they look at the injustice and they say, wow, we cannot allow this to continue. That's what happened in Washington and Colorado, and that's why um, the trend is changing. Thank you.